This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. Members of the United Nations Security Council are heading to Burma and Bangladesh to see firsthand the impact of the Rohingya refugee crisis. More than a million registered Rohingya refugees now live in southeastern Bangladesh after they fled a Burmese military campaign of rape, murder and arson that the UN has called a, quote, textbook example of ethnic cleansing. Meanwhile, the U.S. State Department has confirmed it's investigating alleged atrocities against Burma's Rohingya Muslims, including these accusations of murder, rape, beatings and other alleged offenses. The findings could be used to prosecute Burmese military officials for crimes against humanity. We continue our conversation with Tu Kin, president of the Burmese Rohingya Organization UK, a member of the Free Rohingya Coalition. He was born in Burma, but in 1982, he was rendered effectively stateless, along with a million other ethnic Rohingya, under a new nationality law. This is part two of our conversation. Welcome back to Democracy Now!, Tu Kin. Before you. we talk, about what's happening there today. I think people in the United States, when they hear Rohingya, they're not even sure who the Rohingya are. Sure. You yourself are Rohingya. Talk about um, um, your community um, and why we should care in the United States. Firstly, you know, Rohingyas are an ethnic minority living in western part of Burma. Uh, they are about 3.5 million population of Rohingya. And only uh, about uh, about approximately 500,000 Rohingya left in Burma right now. And in Bangladesh, 1.2 million in other countries, you know, uh, is, uh, they are facing persecution since 1962, you know. When we got independence in from British, British uh, uh, Rohingya being, uh, Rohingya were recognized as an ethnic group like other nationalities of Burma. On that time, my grandfather was a member of parliament. I'm not a citizen of Burma. And my mother's grandfather was the first judge, judge in northern Arkan. But I'm not recognized as a citizen of Burma until when I was there. So Why? This is systematically, they want to exterminate the whole population because they strip up our citizenship, ethnicity, they strip up our uh, citizenship rights, and they deny, you know, the Rohingya identity, the restriction of movement, marriage, education and they confiscate our lands and they create popular violence and they burning down our villages and pushing us to the camps in IDPs in Sitwe and now their mass killings they practice and then they uh, 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 almost like uh, you know uh, to third population already flat. Burma you know. is largely a Buddhist country. Um, are all Rohingya Muslim? Uh, no, uh, Ninety percent Rohingyas are Muslim, I should mm -hmm. say. And Some do you believe Hindus. it's religious persecution? It's a religious, ethnic, and political, mm -hmm. because Rohingyas are the largest Muslim minority in Burma. And what about other minorities in Burma? Other minorities also facing under of this military, you know, like Kashin, Karan, and Shan, and others. But Rohingyas are facing uh, much more than that. Rohingyas are much more targeted. Uh, they deny our existence. They deny our identity. They deny our uh, identity, and they deny our the, the right to have children, the right to have education, the right to have movement. It's been going on many decades. People have been aware after 2017 August. That is what. I so say, that yeah. is the question. Why this most recent wave of horrific violence against the Rohingya that has led to a million Rohingya now uh, fleeing to Bangladesh? The de facto leader of Burma is the Nobel Peace Laureate, Aung San Suu Kyi. What role is she playing in this? Yeah, first thing we should say before uh, I, t uh, I tell about her, you know, <laughs> military senior general I should I, I I call him criminal. Ming online mentioned that in Washington Post. This is unfinished business. That's why we're trying to get off these people from there. And Aung San Suu Kyi, uh, we've been supported for for many years, but now she is totally side taking side of military. She's totally complicit of this genocide. She is defending military. Why is that? 
Uh, well, she's been a critic of uh, the military for decades. She yeah. certainly knows their repression. She was imprisoned by them for years. Yeah, we've been even Rohingya has been supported her. We, uh, I campaigned for her in this New York City, and I campaigned for her in U.S. Congress and U.S. State Department and others to, to be release released. her and for other political prisoners. But they are saying now we are not citizen of Burma. Uh, this is not happening. Where she is denying that these atrocities never happen. You know, she said she does not know why these people are fleeing. Where international, you know, uh, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, UN have a well documented report, and her ministers are spreading hate speech. And two days ago, one of the minister, immigration ministers, said, Oh, we will give them NVC, which is degrading Rohingya citizenship, national verification. Class. Degraded citizenship in Burma. Yeah. Second and class citizenship. Yes, second class. It's not even second class, it's a third class, I should say. And he is telling that by giving them, is we will not allow them to move from one village to another. Officially, her minister is telling about it. Mm. So, what precipitated this latest wave of violence? This is what I mentioned. It's a military been trying for a long time. And so, this is, the, I should say, when some Rohingyas attacks police post, that is how they take in. But the, uh, it's not as far as when I was uh, in Bangladesh, the refugees told me they are not uh, they are not looking for those who attack the police post. They systematically burn down, burning down, house by house, village by village. And someone told me, in one village, Tulatuli, more than 1,000 Rohingya have been killed. And they told them, just get out. You guys have no problem. Just get out from the, your home. And then they've been all rounded up by the military. They're just shooting them one by one. That is what's happening to Latuli. That's what someone told me when I was in Bangladesh. So it's been going on eight months right now. We have not seen any action from international community. We have seen Security Council discussing, but we have not seen Security Council a stronger resolution. But we want to call Security Council to refer Burma into an ICC. That is very important because Into the International military, Criminal Court. Yes, International Criminal Court must bring them, this criminal me online and all perpetrators, and whoever complicit in this genocide. This is very important because with impunity, this is going on. It's not only Rohingya, other Kashin, Karan, Shan, all those, all minorities are facing, puppet, you know, uh, crimes uh, against those other min mi minorities perpetrated by the, this military. So we cannot let it happen. So for the Rohingya, we are facing a genocide in 21st century. Whenever genocide happens, this day, never again. We need protected homeland in Myanmar. We need, this does not mean we are asking any different things, because we are a part of Burmese society. We want to live in Burma, but we need protection from international community to protect us. So UN or other, any government must come forward to protect us. That is the only priority we need. And ICC referral before repatriation, citizenship and others, this need to be. Protection is much more priority, I should say. Okay. Well, Tunkin, as, as we mentioned earlier, the UN Security Council is carrying out a, uh, an independent investigation uh, uh, at the moment. Uh, but they're not the only ones. Uh, uh, the United States is also carrying yes. out an investigation. So, first of all, what do you hope will come out of these investigations? Do you have any faith uh, in uh, uh, the Trump administration being able to deal with this issue? And minimally, uh, uh, the question of uh, Rohingya refugees going somewhere other than Bangladesh including uh, uh, the U.S.? Yes, you know, first thing, uh, we have seen a very strong report from U.N. in the past, in a few months. U.N. High Commissioner already mentioned these are uh, hallmarks of genocide and, and other, you know, fact-finding mission also did their half report, uh, you know, interim report. And uh, it's good, but to release, uh, to get, uh, to invest in investigation, you know, we welcome on that. But the thing is, it's not only publishing the report and covering on the media. We want to see effective action after releasing this report. They must set up timeline and benchmark must take action 
okay we gonna call uh, support ic0 frl and support for you know rohingya protection is needed in bangladesh refugee camps they have to focus on short term and uh, long term that international community urgently needed so were you when we you were in the camp report after report when you were after, in the camps we appreciate what the report when you do. we were in the camps did you see us investigators uh I do not know who they are, but of course I, I saw their report. But uh, what are they saying, and what are they looking for? Has their report come out already, or are they just now? No, I think the report will come up uh, in uh, in May. That's far as what I heard. I saw the news. So I think they are just also interviewing their refugees and the same thing also what we did. Of course, there are. Uh, a million Rohingya population, many Rohingya women been raped, and they can get all the information. What do you want to see? You're here in the U.S. You don't live here. What are you looking for the U.S. to do? U.S. must, call, must support ICC referral. They must support? ICC referral to Burma. Oh, international the, criminal court. the referral to the International Criminal Court, ICC. Yeah. And also U.S. Uh, must put also priority to protect Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh to support more funding and also you know it is important that when they talk repatriation they must support protection issues for the Rohingya homeland this Rohingya they want protection US must support on their protected homeland and also uh, you know it is important uh, US must take a leading role you know where when they supported human rights and democracy for many years. Now a country where human rights and democracy, you know, so-called reforms are going. But for me, this is much disaster under of Aung San Suu Kyi's government and much more uh, political, uh, much more ethnic minorities are f much more f uh, uh, human rights violations and crimes uh, facing by ethnic by, uh, by the military in ethnic areas so we must stop that you know Aung San Suu Kyi is not a hope for Burma I should say clearly because she is under her watch you know thousands of Rohingya been killed under her watch a million Rohingya population fled and under her watch you know two journalists two reporters who report at what's happening the truth you know where these Rohingya a massacre in one village. Massacre in Indian village, and she is, she is, she is just not talking about it. She is defending from military side. And these so are the writers. The these are the writers, reporters who are currently yes. jailed in Burma. Yes. Well, I want to turn to a short video that you provided us from your recent trip to Bangladesh when you were meeting with Rohingya refugees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's a, a, a video that you provided to us from your uh, a recent trip to Bangladesh, and you can, of yes, course, hear a man ago, yeah. sobbing. So can you explain what uh, uh, these men uh, uh, were telling you about what had happened? Ah, he lost his family members and his relatives been raped in front of him and he he's totally you know is in trauma situation so that's you know so he was also you know thinking about what i'm doing and also you know that is a kind of he wanted to see me for a long time so he's very happy to see and so was that a typical just, response of people just to hold you and weep yes this is what they have, they can't, they want to express something, but it's an expressible situation. When I was there, the situation is unexpressible. I couldn't sleep when I was in Bangladesh. And I was there four weeks in September to October. The situation I have interviewed, you know, one woman told me when the military entered, just military knife to death, a seven years old boy. And then military entered her house. She was raped more than how, uh, 20 minutes by the military. Another military tried to rape her and she was managed to, uh, to get out from her house. 
in Froil, she was raped by the military, raping, she was facing rape by the military in front of her, her husband was slaughtered by another military. Well, you, you mentioned um, uh, earlier the need, which is obvious from what you're saying, for uh, uh, international protection uh, for uh, the refugees and those fleeing uh, uh, from Burma even today. What kind of protection uh, uh, has been discussed, if at all? And then the question of aid to Bangladesh, which is hosting 1.2 million refugees. Does the U.S. provide any aid uh, and other European governments uh, to Bangladesh, which is, of course, not a, a rich country? As far as I know, international community being supported the aid, but I think it might not be too long. Uh, it's not enough for the longer term. It's, it should have quite long term plan because uh, this refugee will not return in five, uh, maybe in five to ten years because the bulldoze Rohingya villages, they disappear, in, they are just destroying <laughs> Rohingya presence in their own homeland. So uh, they are building up camps. So nobody wants to return, they told me, to the, uh, to the prison camps. That is what they told me. So the way it looks like in five years, maybe three years, in ten years, Rohingya, ref these refugees, they will not return. Uh, last week, Burma's Social Welfare Relief and Resettlement Minister, Win Myatai, said Burma will start repatriation of Rohingya refugees from Bangladesh ahead of the monsoon. And our main aim is to, re to start the repatriation process as soon as possible, because the monsoon is very near and we are very worried for those who fled to the Bangladesh who are in the camps, because the scene is believing and we, we see, we saw the, all the people in the camps are in very poor and condition. So that's the Burma government official, Win Miet A, um, talking about repatriating uh, Rohingya from Bangladesh ahead of the monsoon season, which is also a tremendous threat that people will drown where they are in um, places like Cox's Bazaar, the most populated refugee camp on earth. But you're saying if there's no protection of Rohingya, they are not going to return to Burma. Yes. This man, he just, uh, he said, this Suji's ministers are world-class liars, I should say, because he mentioned last few months ago, she mentioned that these refugees, they burn down their own homes and they flee. <laughs> what is totally unacceptable in this world, you know? So, and she, now this man is saying, they, as far as what I think, is just a to ace international pressure. They will not take back any refugees. And, uh, you know, Bangladesh uh, uh, government sent 8,000 people and they just select uh, about uh, 600 or uh, 800 something they will receive. So there are no proper plan. As far as, uh, let me bring up the point from Bill Richardson. From uh, Bill Richardson, the Bill former Richardson, governor of New Mexico. Former, former governor of New Mexico. US he mentioned ambassador. in Kofi Annan recommendation uh, implementation commission there, he was a member of there. He did not see any plan from Aung San Suu Kyi to rep uh, about citizenship issues and other protection issues for these refugees. They have no plan. Is just acing international pressure, just bring them to prison camps and just block in aid and just kill them. This is the mm. plan they are trying to move forward. This is, they have, this is intention. We have not seen government and military government, military and government attitude towards Rohingya have never changed until today. And three days ago, five families been fled because these been targeted because we fall false allegation they are from booty down township uh, you know they are well educated and well respected so the government targeting now those or mm. whoever left in Burma, they targeting them. So people are fleeing every day. How can we repatriate back? You know, <laughs> the people are still fleeing. This is just a, a show. So we must, we must get the point. There is no repatriation. This is just a show. So without protection or uh, homeland protection, uh, you know, protected homeland supported by international community, we cannot return. Mm. Where we will go? We need protection. That's well, what I, I want. I want to ask about uh, uh, other steps that can uh, uh, potentially be taken short of, of referring Burma to the International Criminal Court. The present investigation that's underway uh, yes. uh, by the U.S. is uh, modeled on, uh, on the probe uh, that the U.S. carried out in Sudan's Darfur region. Uh, 
uh, in 2004, which made it possible uh, for the U.S. to label the violence there a genocide and eventually, of course, to impose sanctions. So do you think uh, that the U.S. should impose sanctions on uh, uh, Burma? And what effect do you think that will have? I mean, will that be sufficient uh, to stop uh, uh, the Burmese government from carrying out this, uh, uh, what has been referred to as uh, uh, ethnic cleansing of the Rohingya? For me, I don't say it's ethnic cleansing as a Rohingya. I am a victim of genocide. I have met victims of genocide. This is completely a genocide, intentionally destroying our community. So Burmese military and the the government you know they should call every they should do every, uh, so, sorry u.s government should do everything they can you know first they must call icc referral of course sanction is needed because military they do not want to see sanctions that's mm -hmm. why they they quite uh, they quite scared of this uh, quite worry about sanctions so must call has there been a threat to impose sanctions by any uh, government the u.s or otherwise yeah which governments have, have said that they will impose sanctions on Burma? Uh, as far as I know, they just call enough for that, but we have not seen, you know, military, it, it doesn't work, you know, when U.S. call for one person, Mau Mau Ong only, but they must get top military, particularly criminal Ming online, who is senior general Ming online. They must uh, focus on him and other top level militaries. Mm -hmm. Not only one person, uh, you know, uh, sang, uh, they doing sanction is not enough. So they must focus uh, all of the military leaders, even NLD members who are spread in hate speech, NLD minister. They must focus on everyone to to uh, to bring them on sanction list. That is important. Of on the uh, for me, I want to highlight that root cause is, you know, protection and also citizenship and other rights. Before they are right, how can they return? And even the Burmese military and government, they give their rights. We need protection. Anytime these people will face mass atrocities in Burma, because as a whole country, uh, Burma, uh, Buddhist monks, USDP party, NLD party, military, security force, Rakhine Buddhists, they are always denying these people are not from Burma. They are illegal immigrants. So when they come back, they will face again atrocities. So what? How they can come back? That's why the people are saying, we, we do, uh, we, uh, if we return, we will face again. It's the same situation. The people of trauma. They all are, you know, is mentally they are quite, you know, quite destroyed this community, I should say, you know, I met them and I can see their face. And well, of they, course, we will continue to cover this issue, and I want to thank you very much for being here. Toon Keen is president of the Burmese Rohingya Organization UK and a member of the Free Rohingya Coalition, born in Burma, uh, 1982, rendered effectively stateless along with a million other ethnic Rohingya Muslims under a new nationality law. This is Democracy Now! To see part one of our discussion with Tunkin, go to democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. Thanks for joining us.